Yes, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, tankers of Blitz Universe 2, the channel. My name is Martin Dogger, and this is the Your Mama, the pride tank that um, new, well, well, quite newish, uh, tier 10 American auto loading heavy tank. The video has nothing to do with this one. I'm not going to play it. It's not going to be a review of this tank. But I want to discuss something with you. And first and foremost, these are my observations. This is my opinion on what should happen um, uh, in regards to this issue. And I'm not here to belittle anybody or to make fun of anybody in terms of win rate or anything. Um, I just want to share my observations with you. And I would love for you to uh, write down in the comments what you think of this uh, what I am going to show you. Uh, what is it then, Martin, what you're going to show us? Well, uh, let me check that right over there. We are going to go into two games. And if you notice something from the lineup, I noticed it pretty much straight away. Because as I was examining the lineup, I noticed that the Reds had, or we have a platoon of a WZ113 together with the Tortoise, and the Reds have a platoon of a Kranwagen uh, combined with an AMX50-120. Yes, that is a tier 10 tank coupled to a tier 9 tank. Um, also known as fail tunes. In a way, you should not um, platoon these tanks together, because normally you would platoon a tier 10 with a tier 10, a tier 9 with a tier 9, etc. It, it, the game isn't really meant to platoon a tier 10 with a tier 9. And I think this is a bit of a problem. Why so, Martin? Could you please explain? Obviously, I will I will explain. I will tell you uh, uh, everything. Why is it a problem? The game states uh, this is probably not the best option to platoon. You can platoon. If, if you select a tier 10 tank, then you will be shown a tier 10 tank. Best match! But if you go into your tier 9 tanks, then you will be shown... This is a good match. I think it is uh, pretty terrible, to be honest. Why so? Because of the matchmaking. And as said, I am not here to talk about uh, players, about uh, their win rates. I'm not there to tell them they suck or anything or whatever. Uh, I could, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm not going to moan about the matchmaking in terms of uh, you getting matched against uh, high win rate players, etc, etc. Or against premium tanks left, right and center. I'm not going to talk about that. But what I'm going to talk about is about the feature of the matchmaker which does try to balance teams. You may not always figure that out. Because sometimes the matchmaker feels terribly unbalanced. But it does try to balance heavy tanks versus heavy tanks. And then mediums versus mediums. And then tank destroyers versus tank destroyers. And what I've come to notice as well is that in regards to platoons. The matchmaker is far and far better than it used to be. I mean back in the days. And yes I sold like an old, like an old father like a boomer. Back in the days a platoon was matched up with a platoon. Disregarding all the tiers. That meant that an IS-6 platoon could be uh, platooned uh, against tier 6 tanks. So you have a top tier IS-6 platoon and tier 8 uh, match against tier 6 tanks. That was... It, it happened. Nowadays, a tier 10 platoon gets matched against a tier 10 platoon. A tier 9 platoon gets matched against a tier 9 platoon. A fail tune gets matched against a fail tune. Well, that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it kind of is. But there's a bit of a catch as well, because I have a feeling, or at least I've observed a little bit and, and, and checked uh, win rates, etc. And I'm going to show it. And again, I'm not here to belittle anybody. You can see that this WZ113 is top of the list over there. The AMX5120 is top of the list. The Tortoise is right over there. If you're then going to take a look at their win rates, this is a really good player. 63% win rate, um, 16k battles played, first class and a uh, scout medal. Um, the Kranwagen on the on the red team uh, is a new player. He was a top tier tank, so he was matched against a veteran player in the WZ113. The AMX50-120 uh, was a new player. And here's the catch. Th this really is a catch, guys. This platoon on my team, they had a new player as well. And it seems as if this player in the tour, the Steel Destroyer, uh, lots of numbers, was made up against homemade Russia Steel in the AMX50-120. Because the, uh, the matchmaker does seem to do that. And because it matches fail platoons against fail platoons, um, veteran players, or I should say maybe reroll players that, that know the game, but they are 
unhappy with their current account and they want to have a new one, they will start a new game and they will know all the maps. And especially if you have a really veteran player with a lot of crew skills like the ones I have over here. Well, then you know the maps, then you know the choke points, then you know the really nice lines of sight and everything. And if you're then playing against players that uh, don't really know what they're doing, have to load up the next uh, game, obviously, then uh, you get stuff like this as well. I mean, take a look at this. I3 Defender, Scorpion D, T49, Grave Dorker, an SP1C, T26, E3, Eagle 7, STRV. This is like the good old days of, of plus two, minus two matchmaking. We get a Helsing and a Type 58 as well. Um, so yeah, I played this game uh, on my press account. I didn't really mean to, to be honest, because I was thinking, oh, I'm going to play, uh, play the SCG now on my own account. But sometimes I had it locked on my uh, on the press account because there was tanks that I don't have. And I have this one as well. Uh, They're starting to merge a little bit. But anyways, we were in the game, so uh, why not try to play it a little bit? What we're going to do, we are going to go towards the flank, towards base A, as you can see. Um, and I have some help from a uh, from the Bulldog. We have some help from the housing in the back, as you can see. There's a tank uh, heavy tanks at uh, uh, base C area thereabouts. And what is going to happen now is that our two tanks are going to go into base A, just about now. Hello. We're going to blast right through the front of this T26 E3 Eagle 7. And the SP1C and the T49, they are in the cap. Yeah, and you may have already uh, been figuring out what is going to happen here. Uh, we're going to blast at uh, T49. Um, this SP1C, uh, I don't know how he managed to survive without, get, uh, without losing any hit points, but uh, he does. He is a fail tune. He is in a fail platoon with that STRV, as you can see. So we're going to roll around. We're going to smack him in the side with HE. There we go. And he's dead. This happens all the time, guys. I mean, this is the game. You shoot reds, they shoot you back. You blow up, uh, they blow up. And, and at the end, uh, one team wins. But take a look at this guy. Hello! Say hello to plus two and minus two matchmaking. This guy has no hope in hell of doing anything to me he's 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 new he d he really doesn't know we're gonna shoot him up the back of the ass a little bit 416 could have used he maybe but uh, yeah well, what was he to do guys what was he to do in this matchup honestly we're with an strv uh, in in a tier 8 matchup the game isn't plus two minus two anymore it is plus one minus one and this is something that Wargaming should change. Finally, Marty, you're coming to the point of what you want to say. Yes, I absolutely do. I I, 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 I use a lot of words. But what I would want for Wargaming to do is to remove the plus two, minus two, or, or the, plus, uh, the plus one, minus one possibilities of uh, platooning. What they should do is make it possibly possible only for same tier tanks to platoon. Tier 10 with tier 10, Tier 9 with tier 9, tier 8 with tier 8. And then you will avoid things like this. You, you won't avoid me uh, getting shot by an I3 defender. Uh, obviously not. We're going to shoot him and then he's going to uh, blow up. There we go. Prashin de Pradeshtura, Panther King Tiger. Victory dance over there. Um, but I'm going to show you the statistics of these players again. And I have a feeling... and Maybe it's unjustified, maybe it's uncalled for. I have a bit of a feeling that uh, one of these platoons uh, failed tuned on purpose. Why so? I'm going to show you. Uh, the housing on this team, 52% win rate, 77k battles. If they're on voice, it's going to be even worse in a way. But this guy, the Type 58, look at this. 72% win rate. Thumbs up, buddy. Really well played, but 355 games, 16 uh, 141 average damage, 72% win rate. It can be done, obviously. I've done it on, on uh, Sniper Hero Acro, my free-to-play account. But they were up against uh, the SP1C, who is new, and the STRV, who is also quite new. Come on, matchmaking. This isn't a match. This this isn't a match. If, in a way, if could you please sort of balance that out by at least making level... Platoons, so an SDRV doesn't have to face off against a guard or, or versus the Marco or versus the IS-3. 
And and then this one, the Type 58, doesn't have to face against the Defender and uh, the Scorpion and the uh, the T49, even though the tank didn't do any damage whatsoever. I think Wargaming, you should change this. You should remove the possibility to fail tune because I think overall it's just bad for the game. And yes, you can use it to get easy games and and to get more XP because the thrill of plus two minus two two can be there. And you can have really good games in, in type, tier 6 tanks against tier 8. Make no mistake about that. Or in a type 62 versus tier 9. Mm, lovely. But all in all, for the game as a whole, I think it should be removed. So, as I said, please leave your comments down below as well. Do you think fail tuning, the possibility to fail tune, should be removed in World of Tanks and Blitz? I love to hear your comments. Please leave them down below. My name is Martin Dobra. Catch you all on the next video. Cheers. Happy tanking. Bye bye.